Government Conservative MP for North West Durham Roads, Minister Richard Holden, who joins me now. And I note on your website um, that you say, I'm proud to have got Brexit done. I now look forward to the future to build a truly global Britain. Um, what are the three best achievements since getting Brexit done, would you say, Minister? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Well, I'd say from the start, the, uh, the biggest impact we've seen over the last couple of years is probably the uh, Britain's ability to fulfil its own uh, vaccine uh, programme. Well, we you'll did be that, aware, um, of course, the independent of the... website Full Facts say that's not true. And even the boss of our own MHRA, Dr June Rain, has also said that's not true. So well, we could can have we done strike it. that uh, one you, out? You, you... You're absolutely right. You could have done it within the uh, EU, but there's, I think the pressure, if we'd been in the EU to be part of an EU scheme, would have been quite unbelievable. Secondly, I'd also say I'd look at the UK procurement rules. So that's the uh, rules on what the government can purchase and government can buy. If we'd uh, stayed in the EU, we wouldn't have been able to give British preference uh, to a lot of those uh, things now. Uh, we've changed those rules in a lot of spaces uh, to make it easier to purchase uh, from the UK rather than having to tender across the European Union. And uh, thirdly, I'd probably say uh, Solvency 2, uh, linked to some of our trade deals, uh, that enables Britain, to, uh, which has already got a world-leading financial services sector, to ensure that we remain uh, head and shoulders above uh, the rest of Europe and out into the world, uh, enabled to uh, able to trade more nimbly uh, and to respond more quickly to emerging markets as well, which is where the growth in the future is going to come from. I assume you were a Brexit supporter, is that right, uh, Minister? Uh, in, the, in the end, I did vote for Brexit, yeah, yes. but okay. I was actually... Uh, the start of the campaign, I wasn't 100% on either side. Um, but in the end, uh, I did indeed vote for Brexit, yeah. You, you, you mentioned the trade deals. How many trade deals have there been since Britain? Think, next? Um, my understanding has been over 80 trade deals uh, the signed the so the far. 71, the 71, including Australia and New Zealand. Do you know what they've added to gross UK income? Zero uh, well, point, uh, zero point one percent has been added by those trade deals and i don't need to tell you of course there's still no trade deal with the united states or with china so knowing that that we know now would you have voted for brexit well if you look at the eu it's uh, it's also not got a uh, the same sort of I trade deal with the united states they, to they, the UK. They, they've been in negotiations uh, for years and um, what i've what it's been good to see from the trade deals we have secured so with australia new zealand japan uh, and elsewhere, uh, many of them are improved compared to uh, what we would have been uh, within the European Union, uh, enabling our exports uh, to 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 move more freely without tariffs. If you look at, say, for example, uh, you know uh, the spirits uh, tariffs with with Australia, which have been uh, cut now, uh, we're all we're moving in a direction. You're absolutely right that the progress at the at the, at the start of all of these trade deals, uh, you but, see a, a small tick, but that's something that grows over time, and that's. But, uh, a, as the trade relationship develops, my more general question is: Knowing what we know now, would you still vote? Would you still have voted for Brexit? I would have still voted for Brexit because I think it's that you know, the, and the truth is that what a lot of people want to see is Britain in out into the world, but also with control over its own borders uh, and its own destiny. And I think that's what we uh, are, are moving towards. Right. It's never going to be easy when you're leaving a, a very long-term relationship like we had with the EU over 40 years. Um, but the upside uh, is definitely uh, there as well. And I think we can uh, move forwards, whether it comes to our changes to our farming regulations and both which can enhance our productivity on one side but also enhance some of our environmental regulations on the other side as well, not in that big EU scheme. Um, I think there's lots of different things uh, that we can do uh, now we're outside the European Union which we couldn't have done uh, within it. That doesn't mean I don't want a good close relationship with them. I just don't want to um, have to be in the same uh, rules as them with open borders of the EU. Can we turn to other matters? You're, I'm sure, aware that regrettably the firefighters now, the latest group of people who voted for strike action the first time in 20 years, we're looking at around half a million people taking industrial action tomorrow, Minister, train drivers, civil servants, teachers and others. Why would it appear your government is so woefully inept in the sphere of industrial relations, Minister? Look, when it comes to uh, strikes, look, I don't want to see anybody out on strike. The impact of strikes is 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 really significant, particularly uh, on some of the uh, poorest uh, in society and those who really need uh, support at difficult times. Um, but you know, we've seen some of the unions come to the negotiating table and uh, accept settlements. We've seen that with the TSSA and Unite within the transport sector recently, accepting the backdated five uh, percent pay rise for uh, 2022 with a four percent pay rise 
this year. I hope other unions uh, come to the negotiating table as well, because I think there is a settlement to be had. I think what we can't do, though, Nick, is see inflation embedded across the economy. That would be a disaster. We can't afford something like double-digit pay rises across the public sector. If we saw sort of 10% plus pay rises, that would be an extra £28, £30 billion pounds, uh, on, uh, annually we'd have to find in taxes. That's a huge amount of money. would mean an extra roughly £1,000 of tax for every household in the country. Plus it would fuel inflation, and we know inflation hits the poorest and those on fixed incomes hardest. What I want to see is a reasonable pay settlements, a line to modernisation in the transport sector. I think we can get there. Um, I understand that uh, some of the unions uh, what makes uh, you think don't, you want, can get don't there? want to get there, but you know, well, I'm, 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 I hope in the end we'll be able to reach a negotiated settlement. All right, um, let, let's move to other areas. You won't need reminding, but I'll tell my listeners, your majority in North West Durham is 1,144, so it's fair to say you could be seen as being vulnerable. Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, writes in one newspaper, The Daily Telegraph, today that effectively if the Tories will not win or even stand a chance at the next election unless they halve the migrant boat numbers, that is, of course, one of the Prime Minister's five pledges. Is that achievable in your view? And is she right? I think it is achievable. I think we have to do it, though. This is about delivering on what the British people voted for, which was control over our borders. What we saw a few years ago is people used to arrive uh, via the Channel Tunnel, hanging on the backs of lorries. We saw that tragic incident when some of the, when many of those migrants uh, died in the back of a, a lorry. We're seeing, sadly, tragic circumstances when people are dying in the Channel. I think we need to have a robust immigration policy which allows people who uh, the UK wants to come here and work uh, to be able to do that within the uh, back boundaries within the law. I think we should have a, a proper system to help people in real need. We've seen hundreds of thousands of people come from Hong Kong, Ukraine, uh, those Afghanistan interpreters who work with British forces. I want us to be a, a compassionate country, but that means we've got to have strong borders as well. It, it's not an easy thing to achieve when you've got international organisations trying to smuggle these people in, but you, you, you know, we, we know that most of these people trying to travel, tra uh, travel across the channel are economic migrants. They're travelling from safe countries like Belgium, in France. What we want, what we need to see is uh, action there. I, I know it's one of the top Prime Minister's top priorities. I've spoken to him about it personally. I know other colleagues uh, have as well. Um, and the Home Secretary is right that we've got to tackle this issue because it's something that drives people absolutely bananas. Let and I know that the government's let committed to doing it and uh, I'll do everything we can, unlike the Labour Party, to right, actually control some okay. of these issues. Let's just finish with very much your brief as Roads Minister. Do you support so-called smart motorways, Minister? Well, we've paused smart motorways um, while we're evaluating the uh, situation. Uh, we know there's been uh, s there's been some concerns raised about them, and, and it's right that we look at those issues. Overall, our motorway network is very safe. It's certainly safer well, than travelling on a dual carriageway or an A road. Right. But it's right that we, when we're looking at this new technology, um, that we well, get it right and we put in safety so, measures wherever possible. So, which what is exactly measures what will be done. required for that pause to be lifted? Well, I think we're going to have to see that the smart motorways are at least as safe as the current network. I think what we're looking at the moment is we're putting in some of those extra safety features in, um, such as the extra um, bays uh, all along the smart motorway network. We're looking at getting better uh, CCTV and, and station traffic, right. stationary traffic monitoring in there. But this is going to be something that is not going to... We're not going to be looking at expanding that network uh, again, not even looking at it again, until we've got proper information there, because I know right. this is of something right. of real concern to people. Across the country. Finally, one network that will be expanded in London is, of course, ULES uh, later this year in the summer. Now, some Conservative local authorities, such as Bromley and Bexley, are looking into the legal basis for expansion. The London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, has said he's not given to have a referendum because he thinks he'd lose and it needs a brave leader to implement it. Is he right? Would the government possibly consider speaking with the local authorities? Would you support their stance if they took a legal action against ULES expansion? Minister. Uh, ULES ex expansion is really a matter for the Mayor of London. Look, in his, in his manifesto at the last election, he said he'd expand it to the North Circular. Now he's expanded it to the boundaries of Greater London. He has his own mandate uh, elected by people in London, but he's going to justify his actions. And I know that a lot of my Conservative colleagues, uh, both councillors and MPs, have spoken to me about it, are absolutely apoplectic about what he's planning because it really impacts on some of hard-working people. I think of district nurses who have to cross that boundary just to see people or care 
care workers. Um, I think he should, the Mayor of London should think again. We've seen those questions over his own uh, survey before any of this action. And what's really surprising me is that Keir Starmer went out there the other day and backed him 100% on rolling this out, even after we found out that, he'd, uh, that the Mayor of London hadn't been straight with people about his own, um, his own uh, survey at the earlier stages. I think the Mayor of London should think again on this. I think he should listen to uh, the Conservatives uh, members on uh, and, and, and the, those councils, but also MPs. And it's not just those in Greater London who are affected by this. It's everybody all around the outskirts as well, where they're trying to come in, work with things like uh, a lot of people, be small business people, tradespeople, um, but also some of those, as I said, in those professions, uh, you know, the caring professions who have to travel for work. And I, and I really think it's time that the Mayor had another look at this and thought again. Grateful for your time. Thank you. Richard Holden, your Roads Minister, appearing here on LBC. We're at four minutes after eight. Let's give you the news. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This 